Science does an excellent job of explaining the modern world to us. But how does it get on with the ancient world? Actually, it doesn't always do very well. The technology and knowledge of our ancient ancestors is largely a mystery to us, so we're left with a lot of unexplained ancient riddles. Whether they're now partially understood, fully understood, or not understood at all, their stories are fascinating to hear. We're going underwater for our first discovery. This is a Hindu temple off the coast of Bali, Indonesia. The marine archaeologists who found it believe it might be anything up to 5,000 years old. Although Indonesia is mainly Muslim today, Bali would have been entirely populated by Hindus before the 14th century. It's still 90% Hindu today. The most notable Hindu temples in the area are found on nearby Java. But Bali has more temples per square mile and, as we now know, a fabulous long-lost temple beneath the waves. It's been named Devata Vishnu Temple and is just under 100 feet underwater, close to Pematuran Beach. One of the Vishnu sculptures within the ruined temple has been confirmed to be at least 4,500 years old, so it's reasonable to assume the rest of the structures are the same age. In 2005, the local government announced a program of extensive refurbishment and repair work in and around the temple in preparation for its grand opening as a temple garden tourist attraction. Unfortunately, that's led some people to believe the whole temple didn't exist until 2005. In reality, nothing could be further from the truth. All over the world, you'll find museums and religious institutions that claim to have one or more nails from the crucifixion of Jesus Christ in their possession. They can't all be telling the truth, but is this one the real deal? Allegedly, the religious relic was found inside the secret chamber of a monastery in the Czech Republic. It had somehow gone unnoticed until March 2021. Inside the secret chamber was a box covered with a solid gold cross, and inside the box was the six-inch long nail fragment. Scientists have been able to date the box to somewhere between the 2nd and 4th centuries and verify that the inscription on its surface reads, Jesus is King. It's thought that the chamber was created in the 15th century to hide valuable goods from Hussite troops. Unfortunately, while it was possible to confirm the approximate age of the wooden box, it wasn't possible to verify the age of the nail itself. For that reason, we'll never be able to say whether it was connected to the crucifixion. It's definitely very old, and someone in the 15th century thought enough of it to hide it in a secret chamber, but that's as much as we are able to say. Archaeologists have been familiar with Mytilene Castle on the Greek island of Lesbos for a very long time. So have tourists. That makes it a little surprising that a new archaeological discovery was made within the 6th century castle in March 2021. In fact, two new discoveries were made in the same instance. Experts have located a Byzantine-era doorway and a fine example of an Ottoman-era bath. The door is enormous, measuring 10 feet in height and 7 feet across, with a depth of another 7 feet. It's also so old that the wooden door that was once set into it has rotted away entirely. The door has been sealed up since at least the 16th century, which is when someone built a bathhouse directly on top of it. It's known that an ancient settlement called Melanudi once existed within the castle's walls. Could this have been the doorway that led people to the settlement? Unfortunately, because of the level of renovation and development work that was performed on the castle between the 6th century and the 16th, we'll probably never know for sure. Looking for the beginning of the beer trade? Look no further than the ancient site of Abydos in Egypt. Here, we see a brewery that was making the beverage on an industrial scale 5,000 years ago. It's one of the oldest beer-making facilities ever discovered, and certainly the oldest capable of making beer in significant amounts. Egypt was a brand new country when the first beer was produced here, having been united by King Narmer. Perhaps this brewery was created to help people celebrate their new unity. 
It's a massive site with eight brewing units and a whole 40 basins. The beer made here would have been fairly primitive, but it would have been effective. It probably tasted quite sour, but it would also have been fairly strong. Historians aren't sure whether the people of ancient Egypt came here for religious or recreational reasons. We know that the Egyptians sometimes used alcohol in religious ceremonies, but surely that can't have accounted for every drop of the stuff that was brewed in Abydos. Workers needed to blow off steam even back then, so at least some of the product must have been used on social occasions. A suit of armor could be the difference between life and death on an ancient battlefield, but the materials we use to make suits of armor have changed drastically over time. Most people think of shiny metal suits when they hear the words suit of armor, but here's another take on the idea from Siberia. It's a suit of armor made of bone, and it belonged to a warrior who lived in Omsk 3,900 years ago. The discovery is more than a little enigmatic. It was buried deliberately, but wasn't buried in a grave. There's no sign of a human burial anywhere near it. It's also unusually pristine, showing no signs of battle damage. It's similar to suits of armor made by the Samus Seminskaya culture, but was found in territory that would have been controlled by the Krotov culture. Between that and the fact that it's undamaged, historians believe that it might have been gifted to the Krotov by the Samus Seminskaya. Of course, they'll never be able to prove that. The suit was found in March 2021. It's not yet been possible to determine which animal the bones came from, but tests are ongoing. Identifying the oldest Christian church in the world isn't easy for archaeologists or historians. Christianity itself is around 2,000 years old, and many ancient Christian churches appeared at around the same time. That being said, this discovery from February 2021 may be able to make a claim for the title. It's a Christian church hidden underground inside the Narankala Fortress in Durbant, Russia and it was built at the start of the 3rd century at the very latest. The cross-shaped structure is hidden almost 40 feet beneath the surface and is badly damaged but can be identified thanks to the remains of its dome. The fortress is protected as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, which prevents archaeologists from excavating it any further. Because of that, proving the exact age of the church will probably be impossible. It might not even be a church, it could simply be a cross-shaped reservoir, or perhaps a Zoroastrian fire temple. It's a mystery that could probably be solved with a little effort, but frustratingly, archaeologists aren't allowed to make the necessary effort to solve it. Of all the ancient cities in Germany, Cologne is one of the very oldest. It's been standing since the first century, which makes it an excellent place to come looking for relics of the ancient Roman era. That proved to be the case in 2019, when archaeologists found the remains of a Roman library hidden beneath the streets of the city center. There was once a Protestant church on this site, but that was demolished in 2017 to make way for a new building development. Archaeologists were permitted to scour the site for anything of historical value before construction work began, and so the library was found. What gives these old ruins away as a library is the presence of tiny little holes in the walls, known as niches. Inside each niche would be a scroll, stored like a book on a shelf in a modern library. Experts think there were probably 20,000 such scrolls here, which makes it both the largest and oldest library in the whole country. It's a shame that we had to knock down what was probably a beautiful old church in order to find it but at least some good came from the situation. The northern end of the Scottish island of Orkney is suffering badly from the effects of erosion. That isn't necessarily a great thing, but it has at least allowed archaeologists to make a few new discoveries there. If it weren't for erosion in and around the Bay of Scale, experts would never have found marked and incised stones, rectangular bands, cattle jawbones, deer antlers, and boar teeth in the area. They now think 
that this might once have been the site of a village during the Neolithic era. We already know that people lived here during Neolithic times because of the presence of the village of Scarabre, which is less than a mile from here. But it's always been thought that Scarabre was the only settlement on the island back then. Now it seems likely that the people of Scarabre had neighbors when they lived here around 5,100 years ago. Coincidentally, it was a storm that exposed Scarabre to archaeologists for the first time in 1850. Now we've found its sister town in almost the same way. The race is now on to gather as much information as possible from the site before the erosion gets any worse. Long before the first human residents settled on Bray, there were Neanderthals building strange ring structures inside Brunicol Cave in Aveyron Valley, France. Historians think the structures were assembled more than 176,000 years ago. What they don't know is why and it's possible that they never will. The entrance to the tunnel was sealed by an ancient rock slide centuries ago, but in 1990, a 50-year-old boy spent months clearing away the rubble so he could gain entry. When he did, he found himself inside a cavern system that eventually ended up a large natural chamber. Inside the chamber were deliberately broken stalagmites arranged into two large rings, one measuring around 12 feet across and the other measuring 20 feet. In the middle of both rings were piles of burnt animal bones. The bones are older than any known cave painting in Europe and any known human occupation in the area. This must have been a Neanderthal site, and it proves they were capable of making fire. It also suggests they engaged in ritualistic behavior, as the rings aren't thought to be the foundations of houses or any other structures. Once again, it seems we've underestimated the capabilities of our distant Neanderthal cousins. The Etruscans lived in Italy before the Romans, but the Romans eventually became so dominant over the land that much of what we ought to know about ancient Etruscan culture has been lost. We have examples of their written language, but we are unable to translate them. We also don't know what to make of these mysterious underground buildings they built and left behind in Orvieto. Some people describe them as pyramids, but is that fair? The structure was discovered in 2011, but remains unidentified as of 2021. The walls are too well dressed for it to be a quarry, but there's no evidence of a hydraulic purpose either. It's simply a carefully carved pyramid-shaped hole, made for unknown reasons about 2,600 years ago. We're able to age it because of the discovery of red and black figure pottery in the lower reaches of the site in 2014. Around 100 years after the structure was finished, it seems to have been deliberately sealed. More than 150 Etruscan language inscriptions have been found on the walls, they might tell us what the structure is and why it was sealed if only we could translate them. Maybe we'll get there one day. We take a lot of technology for granted in the 21st century. For example, if a property couldn't offer you an oven, central heating and hot water, you wouldn't consider buying it or even staying there on vacation. Go back in time 6,500 years and such things were luxuries but they did exist. We can see them here, at this Neolithic site in Bapska, Croatia. Archaeologists say that this 6,500-year-old oven, which was found in January 2021, is one of the most important discoveries of its kind in all of Europe. The oven connects to a primitive heating and hot water system, and therefore would have been able to heat an entire home. The downside of the system was that it required you to keep a large fire burning in your home 24-7, but it did at least have a covered kiln to prevent the fire from getting out of control and burning your house down. Curiously, small pieces of smelted iron ore were found next to the kiln. Humans aren't thought to have figured out how to smelt iron until several thousand years after the fireplace was built, so its presence here is a mystery. In 2014, 
scientists and other experts arrived in the Avanos district of Turkey's Nevsehir province, tasked with finding out why a few old houses in the area kept flooding. Their investigations involved a little digging, and that digging led to the discovery of a previously unknown city below the ground. Archaeologists were immediately called to the scene, and to their astonishment, they identified signs of human occupation of the underground caverns dating back 5,000 years. The hidden city was carved directly into the rock in ancient times, split into three stories full of houses, temples, and tunnel networks that stretch on more than three miles below the ground. It had evidently been forgotten by the 20th century, but prior to that, it's likely that these streets and buildings were known to the Ottomans, Byzantines, Romans, Persians, Phrygians, and Hittites. It might even have been used as a temporary hideout by early Christians seeking to escape persecution. By that time, the city would already have been ancient. A full excavation of the city would be difficult because of the large amount of standing water, mud, and soil, but local archaeologists haven't given up hope that they might get the job done one day. Who knows how much more there is to discover here. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon.